name is Rita Tasvai. I'm a member of YPFDJ Columbus and in honor of Isra Sene, I wanted to take time to reflect on what Isra Sene means to me, the impact our suwat have in my life, and to share the stories of my fallen family members. As someone born after independence, as someone born after our border war, after just all of the very historical moments in our history, being born outside of the country, there is a major disconnect for me sometimes when um, trying to understand our history and feeling the emotions and understanding the feelings of my family members or uh, those who were um, around and experienced life at that point. I'd always hear the names Jonas and Ephraim growing up and, and eventually my grandpa, he explained to me, Jonas and Ephraim were your uncles. They were soldiers. They went to go fight in the war for independence. I've grown older and older and through my mom, my aunts, my uncle, I learned so much more about the experiences and the daily life of Eritreans during this time. It taught me a lot about what Jonas and Ephraim were like. So Ephraim growing up was just very, very calm and quiet, but just very loving and kind. He loved to just build things. He'd always try and build cars and other things of that nature with any like loose material. Um, he loved animals. He loved, he loved birds. He loved to read and write. And he was just a very talented student. From first to eighth grade, he went to Beit um, Mertigo From ninth through tenth, he went to Uk Ehabahari. And after tenth grade, he had the opportunity to go to Addis Ababa and study. After he began his studies, the Red Terror had also begun. And in 1977, he left Addis Ababa put a hold on his studies and immediately went to Sahel to begin his training. He joined the Ahadu Metabahati and basically they were the ones that would treat and operate on any wounded soldiers. Very, very limited resources. They, they did amazing things and worked as hard as they could. Because he was such a talented student and uh, always was fascinated. He grew very quickly and eventually took a higher up leadership role in the Battle of Barantu in Afabet and in 1990 in Batsit for Operation Funken. And then soon after independence in 91, Ephraim had taken a job for the Ministry of Health and continued till 98. Once the border war had begun, he immediately you know, dropped everything again to go and work in the hospitals and the trenches and whole areas again, do his part. From 2000 to 2002, he remained working for the Ministry of Health, but had taken a higher up position working as a personal health security officer. So that was what he did and in 2002 to Soweto. Um, from 93 to 95 he had actually gone back to school to continue his studies and because his love of medicine and just working with uh, people in that sense had just completely flourished so he returned to school to become a medical doctor but had put it all on hold He married his uh, fellow Tagaralit. And he named his only son after his brother, Jonas. Um, Jonas had also gone off to join the revolution. And Jonas, from all the stories, my family members um, tell me of what he was like. It's unanimous, everyone just recognizes how bold and fearless and how just tough he was. 
He was also just very compassionate and kind. Very talented student. Loved sports. He loved to be active and get involved. Because he was so fearless, of course, that was the type of role he uh, would take on once he had joined the Eritrean People's Liberation Front. First, as a young student, he would be someone that would pass around um, the pamphlets. Or eventually, he word was going around that he was spreading papers and what he was doing, and to evade the Afan, a very just terrible organization uh, connected to the Derg that would torture citizens that they had suspected to be involved in the fight for independence. So to evade them, he had gone off to Berha to join the Meda officially. Um, all the papers that had been in our family house, every paper he would hide them behind the couch. Uh, my mom and my aunts and uncles telling me about how they ripped every area that he had hidden papers and they had to burn them all. He had joined the Liberation Front and took up arms. He was a part of the Dubai Tawagati. So he was on the very, very front lines. Soon after he had joined in 1982 to Sawi'u in Kasadgu. They ripped every area that he had hidden papers and they had to burn them all. He had joined the Liberation Front and took up arms. He was a part of the Dubai Tawagati. So he was on the very, very front lines. Soon after he had joined in 1982 to Sawi'u in Kasadgu. During May when I would and I was asking my family members to tell me the stories of, you know, where they were on May 24th, 1991. I learned the story of how the Tagalti were entering Asmara. My grandma had run up onto one of the tanks because she thought one of the Tagalti was her son. So she ran, she grabbed him and hugged him real tight. I was like, you're not day, you're not day. And, you know, he told her, Ane wa dhunay kun kun ade. You know, and to think of it like that, you know, the day is just so much happiness, so much pride, all of this. But at the same time, there were so many people who had never, they were waiting for their loved ones to come home and just, you know, had to learn that they were never going to come home that way. Um, I know in a very famous Wood Told song, Lamin Lamine, there's a good to me and there's a part where there's a woman talking about how she's lost her child and she says and those are some very very powerful words so as a parent as a mother i'm mourning i'm sad um, but as someone who's been waiting so long and has been fighting to be free i'm angry because my comrade has been taken from me. So hearing these beautiful and rich stories of just what life was like during Meda, what life was like just being a, a citizen at the time, uh, it's very, very just, it brings a lot of hurt, but these, this is how we learn. Our parents, those who have fought for our independence, those who have fought for Ertra, everyone that was alive at that time, they are our living history books. That our history as a people is never forgotten. It's not just important, but it's vital that we have these conversations. We share these experiences with the next generation, with each other, because when we begin to do that, not only is our history saved, but we begin to grow closer as Eritreans, as Butots, as comrades because we all have a duty sure that our tagaranti our suat never go forgotten um, it's important that we share their stories and continue to do so for generations and generations uh, it, it brings hurt but remembering them also brings us happiness remembering their stories who, who they were what they were like what made them happy so that they never go forgotten Heroes don't live, but their stories live on. Keep sharing these stories, keep sharing these experiences.
ክሳኑ ሰማታትና አወጥ ነበር